Dr. Ken Landa. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about EpiPen. EpiPen is a device used to treat acute anaphylactic reactions, acute allergies. The EpiPen consists of a little bit of adrenaline in a plastic tube that's meant for injection and you can carry it around with you. It contains a tiny amount of adrenaline. If you look at the standard device, for people over 66 pounds, it contains 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine. They make an EpiPen Junior for children. It contains half as much. We know that you should inject this medicine right through your clothes into the front portion of your thigh. It's not for intravenous use. It's not for injection into the hands or feet. Not for the head or neck. Not for the buttocks. And interestingly, if you have an anaphylactic reaction, give yourself a shot, get better. In a substantial percentage of the cases, the symptoms flare again after 5 or 10 or 15 minutes and you might need a second shot. Well, there are many different kinds of allergic reactions and anaphylaxis is a type 1 reaction that occurs on exposure to something you're allergic to, typically a stinging insect that might be a bee or a fire ant or a hornet or a wasp or a biting insect like a mosquito. Maybe it's due to a food or a drug. Maybe it's used to a diagnostic substance, maybe an injection in the x-ray department. Maybe it has to do with exposure to a substance even in the allergist's office that they're testing you with to see if you're allergic to something and whoop, you really are. Or maybe it has to do with exercise. We can develop an exercise-induced angioedema or exercise-induced anaphylaxis. Well, anaphylaxis typically occurs within minutes to hours of exposure. The typical symptoms involve the skin or the mucous membranes, involve the respiratory system. Then you have some shortness of breath and some wheezing. Maybe it causes the blood pressure to decrease, and that might be sufficient so that you're not getting enough blood to the brain, blood to the heart, blood to the other organs, or maybe it has to do with not enough blood going to the gastrointestinal system, and then in that case you get some cramping abdominal pain and some vomiting. Well, anaphylaxis typically begins within several moments of exposure and typically involves the skin with itching and rash and hives and swelling of the face or the mouth or the lips or the tongue. But within that several minute time period, you also could get other symptoms, symptoms that include flushing or apprehension or wheezing or fainting or racing heart or falling blood pressure. Some people develop vomiting and diarrhea, abdominal pain and cramps, involuntary voiding. Some people develop convulsions. Can you use the medicine if you have an allergic reaction if you happen to be pregnant? Yes, you certainly can if the benefits outweigh the risks and the symptoms or the side effects of getting your epinephrine injection or your adrenal injection can be basically the same as the symptoms of anaphylaxis. The side effects of the medicine include nausea and vomiting and headache and respiratory difficulty and apprehension and restlessness and tremor and weakness and dizziness and sweating and palpitations and even in senior citizens could include cerebrovascular hemorrhage. The problem is especially acute in older people who don't have such good cardiovascular shape. They might develop cerebrovascular hemorrhage. They might have premature ventricular contractions, arrhythmias, or a heart attack. You have to be especially cautious if you use this medicine in people with heart disease or diabetes or in people with Parkinson's disease. And the medicine can interact with a variety of other substances. So it can interact with diuretics and digitalis preparations, antidepressants, in the MAO inhibitor family or the tricyclic antidepressant family commonly used or thyroid hormone supplements can interact with beta blockers or alpha blockers. Beta blockers used typically for control of high blood pressure. Alpha blockers very frequently used for blood pressure or for prostate issues. First modern auto injector of the adrenaline came out in the 1970s. It was made by Survival Technologies in 1996 with Brunswick. They were merged into a company called Meridian Medical Technologies. Then the drug was marketed and distributed by a division of Merck 
In 2001, it came out as a two-pack version. Then Meridian was acquired by King Pharmaceuticals in 2002, and then it was gobbled up by Pfizer, and in 2007, then Mylan got into the act. Well, Mylan raised the price when they bought the rights to the drug. They raised the price from $57 in 2007 up to 2016 in excess of $600. They haven't changed the drug. The drug is still less than $1 worth of adrenaline, but the price has gone through the roof. Well, Mylan's lobbied to get more of the EpiPens out there in the public, put it in public places, just like the defibrillators. What's the price done? Well, in 2007, it was $57. In 2011, it was $165. And then starting in 2012, the price increased first $2,019, then the next year $264, then the next year $349, then the next year $466, then the next year, 2016, in excess of $600. Same stuff basically in Canada is $131, and you can buy a dual pack in France different company for $85. Well, EpiPen has about 85% of the market, and as a matter of fact, they're rewarded by sales in excess of a billion dollars, $500 million, one billion, $500 million. They have another device that's made by a different company. It's called AdrenaClick, costs about 142 bucks. But remember, it's less than $1 worth of adrenaline. It's estimated in the United States that somewhere around 1% to 2% of the population might suffer from some degree of anaphylaxis, not all very severe. It's estimated that maybe 60 to 100, or some people say up to 225 people might die of the disease every year, and about 200,000 people go to the emergency rooms this product, the uh, epinephrine, is certainly not under patent protection. The company lobbies for increased exposure to the drug. It wants public awareness. It wants to market it to parents of children who have allergies. Obama signed a law when he was president making it more available in public schools. Now, the CEO of the company, she says, that the price increase isn't because of the company, it's because of the healthcare system, the healthcare delivery system. It's due to the intermediaries and the wholesalers and the pharmacy benefit managers and the retailers. They say they only make $137 a pen. $137 a pen and the drug costs less than a dollar. The plastic doesn't cost that much. They say the high cost is due to the research and development, but remember, the drug's been on the market since 1939. Then the company said, well, originally they wouldn't reduce the price because that wouldn't guarantee that everybody who needed it would get it. Well, now the device itself, in the package, there are two of the syringes and a training device. It's interesting to note that the carrier tubes are not waterproof. You can't store them in the glove box. You can't store them in the refrigerator. They have to be kept between 68 and 77 degrees. And when you take the rubber guard off, you have to make sure you don't inject it into your finger because it could cause gangrene. Now, there's an interesting problem with all the money that they're making and all the research and development. The length of the needle is 15.2 millimeters. Now, that might not seem to be very important. But remember, it has to be injected intramuscularly. So you have to be able to get that needle into the muscle, not into the fat that's between the skin and the muscle. Well, depending on your age and your gender and your ethnicity and how fat you are, it might be that the needle isn't long enough. And as a matter of fact, it's estimated overall in one person in five, the needle will not get to the muscle. And if we look at women, about one in three women who inject themselves, that needle will not be long enough to get into the muscle, it'll get into the fat instead. What's the big difference? The big difference is that if you inject it into the muscle, it will get into your blood system and it will do its job within eight minutes. On the other hand, if you inject it into the fat, it'll take more than half an hour to do its job. Well, with anaphylaxis, you can die in 15 minutes. So that's the big deal. The duration of the effect of the adrenaline, once you give yourself the shot, 
It's going to last for about five or ten minutes, but unfortunately, up to one in four or one in five people are going to have a second attack, and then they're going to have to give themselves another shot, another shot within five, ten, or fifteen minutes. Once you have an anaphylactic reaction, you ought to be watched for about four to six hours to make sure everything is okay. Now, of all of the EpiPens that are sold, only about 2% or 1 in 50 of them are going to be used. The rest of them are going to expire and they're going to be thrown away. And not only that, but you're going to have to buy several of the packages. You have to have a package at home. Well, now there's so many divorces, the child lives at home with the mom, there's a different home with the dad. Then they spend some time with grandma, so she's got to have a device. Then they spend some time in day care. They have to have a device. Well, there are so many devices that are necessary that places like the fire department, they've said in some areas, hey, it's ridiculous, the expense. Seattle, they had a thousand of these devices. So what they did is they bought a bottle of epinephrine and they bought some syringes. A bottle of epinephrine, less than two bucks, two and a half bucks. They could just go and fill their own syringes. And as a matter of fact, there's the tendency to believe that the expiration date means you have to throw the product away. But as long as the medicine is clear, as long as it's not got to precipitate, as long as it's been kept in the appropriate temperature range, it's good well beyond the expiration date. Now, there have been several other devices that have been used. They've had some trouble with the FDA problems, with the delivery system problem, with inaccurate doses, but all of these medicines are the same stuff. It's just adrenaline, and you can put it into your own syringe and inject it into your own leg, and you can get the bottle for less than a couple bucks. Now, it's interesting. There's a lot of controversy about the lady who is the CEO of Mylan. So, for instance, Mary Bresch, she was awarded a degree in business, an advanced degree in business, from the University of West Virginia. Well, it was about 10 years after she finished her coursework, and as a matter of fact, she only finished half of the coursework, but her dad is the senator from West Virginia. The university said, whoops, we made a mistake. She shouldn't have been awarded the degree. And to show how good a person she is and how important she is for the company, she decided to take the company out of the country so they wouldn't have to pay United States taxes. She moved the headquarters of the company to the Netherlands. Her salary during all of this time in 2007 when they got the rights to EpiPen was only about two and a half million dollars for the year. 2015 the salary had gone up to 19 million dollars. Well, the company had some high profile Endorsers, for instance, Sarah Jessica Parker endorsed the product, the EpiPen, till she had some inquiries by the press asking about the price and if she knew what was happening. Well, she's not the spokesperson for the company anymore. The company is the subject of class action suits, price gouging suits, the company is the subject of investigations by the Congress, by the House, by the Senate. There's a question even, do you need a two-pack? In most countries, it's sold as a one-pack, one individual device. Well, the sales of the drug in 2007 were about $200 million, and now it's gone up 2016 to about a billion and a half dollars, significant portion of the revenue of the company. Now, Mylan makes a lot of drugs. They also increase the price a lot. So on 21 products last year, they increased the price of the drugs by more than 20%. And on seven of the drugs that are already existing, already marketed, they raised the price by 100%. Now the company says that, hey, uh, we're going to give you some savings cards so you don't have to come up with as much out of pocket. We'll just stick it to the insurance companies or stick it to whoever's paying the real bill. Well, companies had some problems. They've actually had to return to the federal government a significant amount of money. It's estimated that they paid back the government for overcharges about $450 million. Now the company says, because of all this controversy, that they're finally going to bring out a generic form of the drug. They're only going to charge $300 for the drug. 
But remember what we said about the price of the drug. The price of the drug has increased so dramatically over the course of the years that if they reduce the price to $300, they're just cutting back to what they charged in about 2013, 2014. Not the 57 bucks that it was in 2007 when they were still making a profit from it. So anyway, something to consider. Adrenaline, epinephrine, important for anaphylactic reactions. Yes, indeed, there is no question. On the other hand, there is an issue about the price. Remember, the cost of a bottle of epinephrine is very small. The cost of a syringe, very small. You can have the adrenaline, you can have the syringe, you can pull it up and give yourself your own shot. Save a lot of money. Anyway, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching.